Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Now, this Abe Cannon Show. The Abe Cannon Show. Unleash the fury! Starring Abe Cannon. I'm Abe Cannon, I'm the host. Ryan Mano. I'm Ryan Mano. I'm Abe's best friend, even though this show makes me question why. Sam Cannon. I'm Sam. I'm Abe's brother. I love when Sam reads the news. He's like a fifth grader reading a book report. And Dan Levy. A.K.A. Bass. What? Abe Cannon. <laughs> yeah. It's Abe Cannon Show, 888 Stern, 100 Watts. Abe Cannon Show, Halloween Spectacular. I'm the only one dressed up, of course. <laughs> as usual. I dressed up yesterday. You guys didn't get the memo, I guess. I dressed up as Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. See, dressing up like someone like that, though, it's, it's so, like, bizarre that really no one would know. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? It's one of the more popular TV shows. I Coming mean, you're dressed the... up as the guy from <laughs> yeah. the movie from 1970. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure, Captain Relevant. <laughs> Fuck. The show's called Gigolos <laughs> on Showtime, Thursdays at 11 p.m. It's uh, Vin Armani. What's up, Vin? What's up, fellas? I got to tell you, man, uh, I love the show. And, you know, when I tell people that I watch a show called Gigolos, they're like, you're gay, you're gay. But it's not gay at all. It's like, it's it's you banging a bunch of hot chicks. Uh, well, yeah, a bunch of hot chicks and, and others. Other <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what I was... a couple of heifers in there. Yeah, that, that's well. Some in my league. Before we get to that, because I have a lot of questions about that, because you know, usually on the show you're banging decent chicks, but on I remember the very first episode, it wasn't you, but one of the other guys was banging this chick on all fours who looked like the Stay Puft Marshmallow. <laughs> she was she had to have been four hundred pounds, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, how and it's Vin Armani, by the way, VinArmani.com. How did you get started as? Because you're a real life male escort, right? Yes, I am. Were you like a software developer, and you left that to do uh, to do this? Well, I mean, I haven't really left being a software developer. This for me, this sort of it, it wasn't something that I pursued at all. Uh, I mean, the the short story is I was introduced by my to my agent by someone that uh, a woman that I was seeing kind of casually, who happened to also be a client, and said, "Hey, you know what? You're so much better than the guys that get sent over. Let me just refer you." Uh, to this guy, and maybe, you know, if he likes you, maybe you could start doing this. And, and I mean, of course, I'm not going to turn that down. Who would turn that down, right? So yeah. that was that was how I was introduced to uh, to my agent, and, and the rest is kind of history. So besides, besides, like, your monster penis... It seems like uh, hello. It, it seems like it seems like you're, you're now we're really getting introduced to this guy. <laughs> no, but 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 of course of course besides of course, your ten foot schlong, let me go to my question. No, but but, but, I, but but I was gonna say that you know of course these these chicks like you because you have a, a long rod as they say. But I think your real <laughs> gift is the way you talk to chicks. Like it seems like you're real, and that's the thing, Ryan Mano on the show here. He's really good at that too. The conversation. I think people don't understand that you have to talk to a girl and you can't just be like. You can't just be disinterested in everything she's saying. You have to listen to her, ask open-ended questions, and I think you're really good at that, and I think that's why you're so successful. Or it's just because you have a huge penis. Well, no, you know, you know what? I would, I would agree with that. I think the biggest misconception about what we do, and I think I do what we do rather well, is that it's about sex. And I think on the, the flip side with men, it is much more about sex. But, you know, when it comes to women... For them, it's really sex starts much, much earlier. You know, they what they really want is they want to fall in love. Well, and foreplay, myself, foreplay, conversation is foreplay. That's you it. Know? Yeah, well, yeah, it, and conversation should be for like if it's done right, conversation should be the entree in which a woman is like jumping your bones. She should be jumping your bones if you've done the conversation part correctly. Right. You know what, Ryan, on my show here, I swear to God, would be an excellent sixth gigolo to be on the show. Okay, he's he's known he he's also known for his package, good looking dude knows how to talk to chicks, and he has a different look than the rest of your guys. He's a little bit shorter. You got most of you guys are pretty big. He's he could get so I think he could really help the the group there. Yeah. Would would you do it, Ryan? The agency is always taking applications. Garen is taking applications day in and day out. So now, is it one of those in, like sort of kiosk things when you go and like, you know, sign up at a, for a job funny. at Walmart? Like, you sit, like, <laughs> or is it like the other five gigolos that they have to like line up my dick? Do we have to, no, what's the process? No, no. There's, there's no, there's no hazing or anything like that. It's pretty much, you know, our, our agent is 
has been at this a long time and and you know you send him an email and you send him your picture and you talk on the mm-hmm. phone and if he if he likes where you're coming from and you know he's a pretty good judge of character then he'll probably be able to hook you up with some gigs Vic, oh, how, how it's look, Vin. Oh, Jesus. Vin! Oh, Vic. I, I Vin. keep calling him Vic. I know, Vin. Vin, close yes. Him. You're close to him. You're close to him. Sam. Sam. Wow. No, no, you have to know, Vin. Sam's the most uptight guy ever, so he'll never watch your show. Vic is a good name for, oh, for a dude. gigolo, though. Vic is a good name watch, for a gigolo. Watch the show. You will love it. It doesn't matter how uptight you are because the show is really not with you. If it's not. If you haven't seen the show, they, it, it really isn't what you think. It is a little explicit, but that is going to go by the wayside really quickly. Well, I'm it's thinking it's a special about guys having sex with out. chicks. Well, no, dude, it really what it is is it's a lot like your show, right? It's oh. a lot like your show that if you guys were, instead of doing a radio show, you just happen to be five gigolos. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really just us hanging around mm-hmm. and, and shooting the shit. That's really what it is. And I think Sam was about to ask how yeah. lucrative it yeah. is. Yeah, I mean, how much could you make in a year if you're really good? Vin. Oh, man. It, well, you know, that, that depends on how much time you want to devote to it and, and whether you're willing to move and travel. I mean, you could make, you know, there are some guys who just do it kind of as, as a side gig, and they may make, you know, a, a grand a month in extra income, and there are others of us who do it, you know, for a living, and I don't know, six figures if you do it right. Do you charge by so the I pound? Mean, <laughs> by, by the pound of, of, of what? By, the, my, by my poundage or by their poundage? No, their, their poundage, you know? <laughs> no. No, no, no. It's, it's, like it's flat, flat rate it's up to like yeah, 130, flat. you know, and then over that it's like five pounds every five pounds or like, five dollars. Like, you know? like a buffet you know, to you know, go. I'll be, yeah. I'll be honest with you, man. When, you're, when you are dating as a profession and it like, for me, I get paid the same amount no matter what happens on the date, right? Mm-hmm. So I love to go out on a date, no matter what the woman looks like, where she's like, you know what, I just want to go to dinner and I want to go to a show and I just didn't want to do it by myself. Mm-hmm. For me, that's great. I yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. Money, same amount of money, I get to just go out, hang out for a couple of hours, and then leave. You know, so, so I don't go into it, like, whether she's the hottest thing in the world or whether she's, you know, maybe just average or whether maybe she's, just got divorced and she's a single mom and she's got a couple extra pounds. Sometimes those women are the easiest to deal with. You know, you could imagine like a hot demanding chick who's like, do this, yeah. do this, do yeah. that. For Wear this hours. leash. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> so, you know, I mean, when you're doing it as a profession, what a woman looks like is a lot less important than what a woman acts like. But, but Vin, have you ever walked into a room and you're just fucking disgusted? And do you like here, if I were you and I walked in and like, like I said, that the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man is sitting there in the thong, I would tell her, you know what? I just want, I tell all the girls this up front. I do have herpes, but I am going to wear a condom. And that'll get her. She'll be like, get the fuck out of here. Then you don't have to like the <laughs> asshole. Then she's rejecting you. I would do that to every fat chick. What, not, if, what if she was and, like, yeah, that's cool. And, I got and HIV. You'd be, working, you'd be working for about one week. You know what I mean? <laughs> but but Vin, you, you you can't tell me that you've never walked into a room, saw some like job of the hut laying on a bed, and you're like, "Fuck this, I'm out of here." No, I honestly can tell you, I have never had that happen, and it's usually because wow. I don't walk I don't walk into a room and have a woman laying on a bed. Usually, it, I mean, again, it's I'm going on dates, so it's really like I show up and I get to meet this woman before clothes come off, before anything happens. And for the most part, they've already chosen me, and they've decided that they're going to have a good night that night. So, you know, I get them at their most happy and cheerful, and, you know, they obviously have enough money to be able to afford the service that I provide. So most of them are really interesting women. And uh, you know what? I I have a a drop-dead gorgeous girlfriend, and I've been with tons of beautiful women. So at this point, it's just like hot is whatever, to me, yeah. you know, I, I, I really just want to be around people who are awesome to be around. And we're talking to Vin Armani, uh, Gigolos is on Showtime, 11 p.m. on Thursdays. Well, it's on demand. Watch it. I will. This is a great show. Go ahead, Sam. Vin, how does your girlfriend deal with it? I mean, does she, does she have a problem with your profession? Or initially, maybe, did she have a problem with it? Well, you know, we, we talked about it from the very beginning. It was just, it was out in the open. And, it, I, you know, she's a great girl because she walks into everything with an open mind just her whole life she walks into with an open mind and so she sat and she listened to me tell her what was up and i mean she's dated all kinds of guys from you know 
famous musicians to athletes, you know, high, like CEOs, really high quality guys. And obviously she had never ran across somebody who said, hey, I'm a male escort and that's how I make my living. And she was intrigued by it at first. And, you know, we talked about it and we've set boundaries and we talk about it on a, a daily basis about what's going on. And, and since we've been able to keep it honest like that, it's, it's been great. And she's understanding about it. And, you know, she's, she's my biggest fan as well. Do you get a lot of, like, celebrity chicks, especially now that it's on TV and people know who you are? Do you get, a, like, extra famous people or people that we might know calling for you? A celebrity client? Yeah. Mm, no, I mean, you know, we don't really have that many celebrities that that call us. We do get a lot of, like, wealthy kind of international business women who, you know, have flown in. I, you wouldn't know their names, but they're, you know, CEOs of major companies and whatnot. Right. So. We get a lot of those women, but celebrities, you know, they, they, it's not, I don't think it's so much their thing to hire somebody like us. They, yeah. prefer, you know, they want to be in the public eye. It's different. Like, a, you know, you'll hear of, of more like uh, male celebrities yeah. frequenting places like the Bunny Ranch right. and stuff like that, but it's right. different exactly. for girls. When it comes down to time to have sex, do you have any like, um, you know, I mean, if you're not really feeling it and you've got to perform, you know, I mean, even sometimes, you know, at the end of a long day for me, if I'm stressed, it's like, sure. you know, and I have a hot girlfriend, you know, sometimes you'll halfway through, you'll like think of the baseball game or something and then it, sure. it kind of dies out. Like, do you Absolutely. always have Viagra on you or do you like <laughs> tie like a ring around your cock or I mean, how do you, how do you, you know, what's your plan if, if things start to go south? I mean, cock rings are great, but it's really just about developing kind of, like you say, it's like being able to develop that focus and I just really work hard. I'm like, I'm at work. It's one right. of those things. You know what I mean? Like you guys, you guys are there, you're hosting your show and you could go off and start daydreaming in the middle of this interview about some baseball game, but you know what? You're not going to be doing the show for very long. So it's like, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess it's different. You know, when I'm at home, sure, everybody. Sometimes you're just stressed out or you're thinking about something else and it's just not there. But for me, it's like when I'm at work, that's, that's the time that like for this two hours or four hours, right. or, you know, until the next morning, I got to be on point. Yeah. So is that like an argument between you and your girlfriend if you come home and you're like, I really don't want to have sex? And she's like, why? Because you're too busy fucking everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, it, it usually doesn't happen like that. Usually, by the, usually when I get home, I'm like, I'm super horny. Yeah. So she gets, you know, she gets the best end of the deal. I like, you know shower up and i'm like completely clean and then totally ready to go so she's it's, it was like a warm-up for me most days are like a warm-up for me <laughs> you, you know what's cool about you Vin? this is why i wanted to have you on the show I, I you're the only guy i wanted on because you seem like a normal cool guy. the rest of the guys are a little weird on your show aren't they like they're just like kind of <laughs> i mean they, like you just seem like one of the guys but the rest of them they have a little something weird about them don't don't you agree with that it's the the thing about this industry is that it's really hard to I come from a different place than than those guys come from. It's sort of like uh you know most of the guys who are escorts come as sort of models or actors or people who want to be like in entertainment and you know so that it, it's very much about the way they look and maybe you know that type of person is a little narcissistic and they have a couple of little quirks but I really didn't come from that place like I I'm I never wanted to do this. I'm from L.A., from Southern California, but I never wanted to be an actor, you know. I've, I've always been on the, the other side of it, kind of working production and doing uh, and as a software developer. And so this fell into my lap. So, like, I am just a regular dude. I really am. You know, not, the regular that's, software that's developers are not gigolos, by the way. Usually they're pretty no. nerdy and got beaten up a lot. <laughs> it's it's a, a lot of – that's true for a lot of them. But you know what? It really is – it's changing. There's like this whole programmer movement that's coming because you know you got to. <laughs> I've, I've never heard that. That's I've, 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 I've never heard Google that. It. Google it, programmers, and, it, I will. and and these guys are like, well, if we're hacking computers, maybe we could start doing some panty hacking. You know what I mean? So like, there's big. If you go to Silicon Valley now, like all these guys are are working out and they're taking supplements and they're getting big and they're going out to the clubs and they're dressing right because they've got the money to do it and they're smart enough. So, like, dude, I'm smart enough to be doing all this. Why am I messing around and not getting chicks? If I exactly. just spend a little time in the gym and do these things, I'll be getting chicks. And they figured it out. Why don't you give us three tips? Like, because I'm going to a Halloween party tonight. You as okay, a guy yeah. who, who could easily get lit. And by the way, are you dressing up like anything uh, tonight for Halloween? I'm dressing, up like, I'm dressing up like Vin Armani. 
I'm going to Armani from Gigolos. <laughs> I've always been Armani, bitch. You're going hey, as a Gigolo. What 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 are, what are three? As a gigolo, yes. <laughs> what what are three tips besides just saying, "Oh, show them your dick." What are three tips? That's not a tip. That's a bad tip. It's not, <laughs> what, it's what, not good. What are three ways that I can lure these chicks into doing? If shit? If that's what you're doing, no wonder you're you're, you're asking for tips. It's not working. Show them your dick. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Anyway, okay. Vin, Vin, help, help my guy out. He clearly needs it. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, I would say the first thing is you, you, have, to be, you have to be willing to just go up to somebody and just be kind of yourself and in your place and that you're running the, the show but, and not care what, and not do it because you want her to – look at you or go home with you or talk to you, but you're, you're enjoying and having fun in your space. And if she thinks you're an idiot, you own it. Just be like, yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm, I'm the best idiot in this spot. You know what I mean? It's, it's about enjoying, enjoying yourself. And, and in that way, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter yeah. what your body's like. That impresses every woman. That's a good point, Vin, because I notice like, when I walk in somewhere with a little swagger, Instantly, exactly. chicks are they're drawn to you, no matter who you are. If you exactly. walk in like you're the man, they really do like that. It's true. It's true because, you know, it, it, they're looking around. All women are subconsciously trying to judge the hierarchy of the value of mm -hmm. the men in the room, right? And even, and so, even if it's – go ahead, Ben. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I mean, it's, it's just that when, when a guy is saying, you know, when he's acting like he's the shit – She's going to assume until she has other information that he is the shit. And you know what? If you're acting like the shit, like that's it. And so even it's if not about being arrogant, but it's it's about having fun and and saying this is who I am and I'm good with that. And even if it's not, you know, I found even if it's not like y y acting like you're the shit, as long as you're not um, negatively like being introspective, if you're you know self conscious or you're fidgeting or anything like yeah. that, I mean. You know, you don't have to act like I own this fucking place, but you also, I mean, part of it is not acting like a, a nervous wreck. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it's re it really comes down to that you don't care how she That's reacts it. to you. Absolutely. You, you know, if she, if she likes you, then fantastic. Let's have a conversation. Yep. If you don't like me, then you know what? We don't have to talk anymore. I'm having fun myself. If you want to jump on the fun train yes. and you want to and you want to roll down to to the place where I'm at, let's go. But if you mm -hmm. don't, cool. You didn't have to buy a ticket. Well, Vin, as a follow up to that, I mean, how do you how do you segregate um, like swagger from arrogance? Because I you know walk into a room and I try to have swagger, but everyone <laughs> just thinks I'm being a dick. Like, is there like some gray area that I'm missing? <laughs> Sam yeah, tries to have swagger. You know what it what it comes down to is your relationship to other people. So arrogance is going to be something where you're trying to put other people down and you're trying to say that you are better than someone else. And I'm not. Whereas, right. Whereas, well, and that's the thing. Swagger is when you're like, when you celebrate the things in everyone. So, you know, if, if you're walking into an arrogant guy, it'd be like, oh, look at that guy's outfit. That's whack. But a dude with swagger would be like, man, I like whatever's going on with your thing. Even if it's even if it's a little whack, you know he'll give him he'll give him a pound and be like, "What's up? Come, let me get you a drink." And and that's the thing that will draw people into you. It's about your attitude that you're uplifting other people around you, that you don't have to put them down, but you're still fresh. You're doing Vin, your thing and you're celebrating yourself. And Vin, another thing guys need to know: the guys who have girlfriends, you can't be so fucking all up in her business all the time. I was at the gym yesterday, and this dude was complaining to his friend. He's like, "My girlfriend doesn't want me to come to this Halloween party with her tomorrow," and I told her that there's gonna be other guys there. And it's like, dude, have a little confidence in yourself. Let her go out and do what she has to do. And if she's gonna come back to you, she's gonna. If she's gonna cheat on you, she's gonna cheat on you regardless. Well, that's that right there is a huge thing that that men really need to understand, and I can tell them this from the fact that it's an aspect of my profession, is that if a woman has decided that she's going to cheat, there's nothing you can do to stop her, and it's very unlikely that you'll actually find out that it happened if she doesn't want you to know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so of course. You know what? Just get it. So just get over it. Mm -hmm. get over Dude, it. Don't worry about her cheating and just be better yep. than whoever she might be cheating yep. with. My friend just banged this chick in the shittiest hotel ever, and she lives with her boyfriend. That just shows mm -hmm. you how desperate this girl... He took her to, like, the, the apartment from the movie Big, where Tom Hanks stayed in, <laughs> okay, where you have okay. to, like, get a $10 deposit for the remote control. <laughs> he banged her in that room. And that's how... 
That's the St. James Motel. That's how desperate she was to get laid. Yeah? <laughs> well, Vin Armani from the show Gigolos, Thursdays on Showtime at 11 p.m. Vin, we've already established that you're a man of honor and an honest guy. Um, let me. We do this thing on the show called the lightning round, where it's just really quick answers like yes or no or one-word answers. Do, okay. do you want to do that really quick before we let you go? Let's, let's roll. Let's roll, man. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. The lightning round with Vin Armani from Gigolos. Have you ever ATM'd a chick and then made out with her? Damn. Do you want to describe uh, yeah. what that is? That's yeah. S to mouth. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Have, have you ever accidentally crossed swords with another guy? Um, no. Okay, good. Have you ever had <laughs> have, you, have you ever had to wear women's panties? Have I ever had to wear women's panties? No, I've never had to wear women's panties. Oh, you just wanted to. <laughs> uh, no, okay. I've, never, I've, never worn, I've never worn women's panties. <laughs> okay. Have you ever banged a chick who weighed over 300 pounds? Likely. Probably. 400 pounds. <laughs> I, I I haven't put him on a scale, but probably not, four, probably not 400. 400's a lot for a woman, yeah. Okay, so, so 500's out of the question, right? <laughs> yeah, totally uh, out of the question. How about uh, if you're a banged a chick with a physical disability? Absolutely. A hair lip? Ooh. Um, a, a, a cured hair lip, like, you know, <laughs> used, to, used to have one, yeah. Uh, a club foot? No. Gout? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever banged a chick who was missing a leg or an arm? No. You know, that's actually pretty oh, cool wait, because... Wait, 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 wait. Not missing? <laughs> wait not, for it. Yeah, not, like, like not a... Not missing. Not missing one, but like a, like a thalidomide, like kind of like a deformed one. Like a gimp arm, like a T-Rex arm. arm. Like a nub. We'll take yeah, that. exactly. We'll have one of those, so I don't know. Do, I guess do you find when you do that that you get easier access to banging her? Because the one leg's missing, you could creep right in there. Well, no, she, this was the arm. Yeah, oh, right. that so way. I assume, but I assume if the leg, if it was the leg, then probably yeah. Okay, say, yeah. Uh, back to the lightning round. Have you ever banged a blind chick? No. A deaf, a deaf chick. Uh, partially deaf. <laughs> uh, skin tags. Skin tags? Yeah, yeah, those are out there. Uh, do you, <laughs> when you're banging a chick from behind, you flex in the mirror. Absolutely, if Patrick Bateman. Mirror, I got it. Jason, Be yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Patrick Bateman, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> ben knows. Uh, I do, the, I do the exact same, I uh, the exact same pose too, and I look at myself nice, like, oh, nice. oh, like that exact same. Uh, when you're disgusted by a chick, what song do you sing to yourself? Um. Oh man, I don't. I, I guess I don't really. Sing. I try not to sing to myself if I'm disgusted. <laughs> <with music. laughs> do, you, uh, do Do you have a nickname for your penis, like Snuffleupagus or the Great One? Uh, yeah, I, I do, but it's actually the whole the whole area. It's uh, Hiroshima, Nagasaki. And <laughs> <laughs> has, has a chick ever snowballed you? That's where you come in her mouth and then you make out with her. Um, no, no, I haven't done that. Are guys with small penises losers? No. Okay. Um, when you were younger, did you wear Zubas? <laughs> two, two more. That's it. Are, th are those 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 animal pants? Yeah, animal print. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. When I was when I was like. Seven, something like seven or eight. Is it true that you're having a feud with a guy named Blake Gucci? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> <fucking> awesome. <laughs> Dude, that's gonna be my my escort name, Blake Gucci. That's that's the shit. Actually, I'm thinking of changing my name now to Blake Gucci. That's, Vin, that's fine. a better name. <laughs> Dude, you could be you could be Blake Gucci. All you got to do is give me ten percent of the merchandising rights. That's it. Blake Gucci's yours. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna have to give the other ninety percent to Gucci. And final question, have you ever gone on a job expecting to see a chick and you walk in and it's either Elton John or George Michael wearing a gimp mask laying in a bed? Uh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> 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 but no, but no. All right, well, awesome. Vin, it was really fun talking to you, man. Gigolos on Showtime Thursdays, 11 p.m. Vin Armani, you're one of our favorite guests now because you're oh, a thank man you of guys honor. so much. I had a great time. It's a great show, man. Thank you, guys. Later, bro. And uh, we'll be right back. It's Abe Cannon's show on Howard 101. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know how or under what circumstances the four of you found each other. We'll be back with more of the Abe Cannon Show. I gotta take a piss. On Howard 101.